All right, welcome back everybody to part two of the webinar series, why, how to get your middle-class welfare check payment or why the 30-year mortgage is the equivalent to a, a, a middle-class welfare check payment. Brad Gibb here with Jimmy Vreeland out of the Cashflow Tactics team. And uh, we're gonna up the ante a little bit here. I'm gonna be a little bolder in my claim. In, in the prior video, if, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch part one because we, we get into more of the theory and, and the ideas behind what we're talking about. But we need people to realize and understand that we're living in an anomaly right now when it comes to financing and money and capital. And the opportunity to capitalize on that to build wealth may never come back and may never be around again. It's, it's only been around for a relatively very short period of time, 30 or 40 years, right, Jimmy? Yeah. The mortgage as it exists right now has only been around for that long. And guys, there's no other entity on the planet that has more borrowing capacity than a W-2 middle-class American today. As long as it's backed by a piece of real estate. As long as it's backed by a piece of real estate. You can't okay? borrow money at will just to go to Vegas. That's not what we're talking about, right? We only borrow money to buy an asset and an asset that produces cash flow. And you right? can't borrow money to like start an app or even start a business. You can kind of get some SBA loans, but they are a pain in the ass. They are. This is, this is basically the best way to buy a business because a piece of real estate operates exactly like a business, but we can get subsidized financing for it. Okay. There are no other entities. The major corporations can't borrow money at this low of a rate fixed for 30 years. Most sovereign nations, can't borrow. The U.S. government itself can barely borrow at the rates that you're being offered. And then their bonds are 20-year bonds, okay? And you can borrow for 30 years. So this is an opportunity that we do not want people to miss and want people to understand just how powerful that is. You can borrow better than Apple, better than Microsoft, better than IBM, better than any of the Fortune 500 companies, and better than most sovereign nations. So why aren't you taking advantage of it? I guess is really the question of the webinar today. Right. You need to see some numbers. Okay. So let's look at a few numbers. If the, if the prior one just did, if you're kind of more analytical, like I am, the, the, the other one might not have made sense. So I'm going to move this for a second. We're going to come back to this. Yeah. The, we were definitely drifting on yesterday's video. Yeah. But here we come back. There's our Facebook page. If you haven't liked us on Facebook, go find us on Facebook. Um, but I'm going to bring up right here. Okay. So here's, kind of the essence behind what, what we're telling you, you guys can do. For most people, real estate doesn't look like that attractive of an investment. Okay, there's a couple barriers to it. Jimmy, the average rental property in St. Louis that you're able to sell to a turnkey buyer is what? Uh, let's call it $75,000. $75,000, okay. Yeah. And the rent on that is gonna be what? A thousand. About a thousand bucks, okay. Now, Proven numbers, if you want to be very conservative, to say, I want to buy this property and use the cash flow to take care of every single expense that I may ever have on the property. So property taxes, property management, maintenance, repairs. And then also we realize that the roof slowly over time is wearing out. So it's not taking money out of our pocket every month, but eventually we're going to have to replace the roof and the carpet and the water heaters and the cabinetry and the siding and all that stuff, right? Maybe. So if we started, I mean, again, if we hold property for 30 years, we're, we're going to have to come up with that stuff. Maybe. So if, if we, maybe if you want to know why Jimmy's saying maybe and not yes, there's a cool strategy called lease options that gets you around most of that. But just so we don't have people blow us up in the comments saying, you'll you know, spend more than that. We're just going to be super conservative. Okay. And say expenses are 40% of rent, which is 400 bucks a month. If you set 400 bucks a month in a siding account, you'd never have to come out of pocket for this property ever again. Okay. So that gives us cash flow of 600 bucks a month or $7,200 a year. This is if we bought it with cash. If we just paid cash. Right. Okay. With after tax income. So really you'd have to earn a hundred to buy a 75. That's awesome point. Okay. So let's actually put that in there. So you'd really have to earn at least a hundred grand To be able to have $7,200 in cash flow. Yeah, that's light, I think. That's only a 25% tax liability. Yeah, that's pretty low. Probably that's pretty low. 15. Yep. Hey, pause it for two seconds. Okay. 
are you bleeding or dying? Go <laughs> out of my office and I will find something for you later. Grab something out of the cabinets. <laughs> My wife had to run a quick errand out of the, out of the, just get something out of the bins in the kitchen. <laughs> Bleeding or dying. Either the, a fig bar or some of the granola things or pretzels or something. I'm Go. sure your dad has a bucket of Skittles you can have. Uh, somewhere. I wish I did. I just throw it at him. Yeah, that's my rule is look, are you, if you're not bleeding or dying, don't come in my office. That's hilarious. <laughs> okay, are we ready to go? Yeah. Okay, so minor interruption there, we're back. So uh, you have to earn at least $100,000, somewhere between $100,000 and $150,000, depending on what your, what your net tax bracket really ends up being, okay? To be able to produce this $7,200 a year, okay? Now here's the difference if we're able to, so this comes to, based off a $75,000 purchase price, this comes to about 9% cash on cash. Okay. If we use the hundred thousand dollars, it's seven point two percent. If we use one hundred fifty thousand dollars, it's even worse. Okay. And this is where most people look at it and say, "Geez, for the potential risk that real estate brings me, or the headache that it brings me, this isn't that great of a return. Seven percent on based on my gross income—that's not amazing." And I would agree. This isn't why I'm in real estate. If this is all real estate could provide me, I probably would not be in real estate. Jimmy, would you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. Here's the difference, though. If we accept the welfare payment that is being offered to you that you may not know about, then this is, this is how it changes. The purchase price is still $75,000, but we get to borrow from the government at subsidized rates, $60,000. So we are only out of pocket 15 grand. Yeah? Yep. And at 5% over 30 years, this is a mortgage payment of about $320 a month. Okay. Yep. So if we take our cash flow of 600 and we take out that $320, once my pen catches up, this leaves us with about $240 a month. Now, does that include taxes and insurance? Yes, because remember the 600 was already net of our $400 of total yeah. expenses. Whoa, of total expenses, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we add financing to that. So that's interest cost included that we're paying to the bank. We're left with about $240 a month. Okay. Multiply that by 12. And what do we get? What is that? 200, I, people have probably already done the math. 240 times 12 is $2,800. Okay. So this is where people who don't understand what's going on are saying, "Bah, the bank's taking all my cash flow, right? I could have had $7,200, but now I only have $2,800. I would rather pay cash for my real estate. Except for the fact that we only had to pay $15,000 to get this cash flow. Yeah, where else are you going to put $15,000 down and get close to three grand a year? So $2,800 divided by $15,000 that's an 18% cash on cash. And I think it's a little high. I think the cash will be closer to 200, but we're just playing the game. We're just, yeah, we're just kind of pulling numbers out of our, out of our rear end here, right? So we're looking at, well, they're not out of our rear end, they're just rounded. So we're looking at maybe 18%, okay? Now, factor in that now we only had to earn somewhere between $20,000 to $30,000 at the most to be able to save 15,000, right? Right. So even from that standpoint, our rate of return is still orders of magnitude better than what we would get if we paid cash out of pocket. Right. And we get, we get 30 year fixed worry-free financing against the property. So if there's a market crash in two years, do we need to be worried about that? No. No, and I'll, I'll give you my example. I started buying real estate in 2006. How was my timing? Great. Okay. I was bringing the worst, right? Okay. So I bought six properties in 2006 and 2007, and then they all promptly dropped by 35%, just like everybody else's property did. And I have people all the time, they're like, oh my gosh, what did you do? Like, how did you survive? Why did, did you go bankrupt? It's like, no, all I did was just cash rent checks for three years and waited. 
And actually I ended up raising rents by 10 or 15% because I had a waiting list of people to rent my houses that had just got kicked out of theirs. Right. Cause rents so go up in downturns. Yep. Cause I had, and I had 0% vacancy because nobody was willing to move out because they knew there wasn't another house for them to rent. Or there wasn't another house for them to buy. Yep. And well, then they couldn't qualify for it. Right. Okay? So I just sat back and collected rent checks. So the rate of return that we're talking about here is completely, we haven't even added on the fact that we can get between five to 15% additional rate of return based on appreciation. 1% appreciation would add 5% to this. Well, then on the left side, that um, nine, seven to 9% return is also going to be taxed at, or, at ordinary income rates. Yep. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll be able to shelter a little bit of it, Yeah. but we'll be creating too much cash flow to be able to have the regular deductions of real estate offset that. Right. Whereas over here per property, because of our leverage, we can shelter the entire $2,803,000 and not have to pay a dime in income taxes. Okay. So this is the core behind what we're talking about in the idea of, Oh, I moved it over here of collapsing time. This is literally how you collapse time is you understand the process of taking so something that's normal, apply a better process to it and double or triple the rate of return that you're getting now. I mean, Dalbar tells us the average equity investor is earning around 5% returns over the last 20 years. You were earning 5% per year. Is that before or after taxes? Before taxes. Okay. Because most people are investing in their 401ks. All right. Okay. So you're earning a 5% before tax rate as compared to, let's just say 15% after tax. That's, that's three times better. And then the other thing you said earlier, you use the word qualify. Like there is a small segment of this society that has a W-2 and meets all the qualifications that they can qualify for this financing. We did and the get, to show yeah, you right. better, but you have to recognize that you – you're trying to maximize your, you maximize your 401k and your health benefits for having a job. You need to maximize your ability to leverage that W-2. And, and that's, it's crazy because the people that can qualify for this are the people that are doing everything right. They're staying out of credit card debt. They're saving aggressively for retirement. They're being responsible. So and those people are the ones being punished the most. Behavior. Yeah. So this is your ticket to being able to do it. And one last comment I'll make on this. People ask me all the time, like, oh, but shouldn't I get my 401k to get my match? It's 50% or even 100% some companies and it's free money. Like, yeah, you could do that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like that will be good. You'll have more money at the end of the day than, than if you didn't do it. That's true. But the, that money then earns 5% for the next 40 years. Whereas here we could take the money and earn 15%. And this is the best match in the history of the world. Because if we borrow from a bank, like you put your money in a 401k and you get a 100% match. I get a 400% match when I buy real estate. Because for every dollar that I put in, guess how many dollars the bank puts in? Four. The bank backed by the government. The bank backed by the government. So this is your chance to have the government match every retirement dollar that you put in by four. You put in one, the government gives you four. You put in one, the government gives you four. Or you, and then you earn 15% returns on it. Or you could go back to your 401k and you put in a dollar and your company puts in a dollar while the economy's good, while you're still employed. Maybe only 50 cents. And then they'll just change it when it doesn't work for them anymore. And hey, maybe they did create this system to benefit the middle class. I'm not gonna put value statements on any of this. I just know it exists and that it should be leveraged. Yep. And we know that in a free economy, it wouldn't exist. But again, we don't live in a free economy and we're not going to anytime soon. So we may as well take advantage of it while we're here. So if you want to know more about this and the broader strategies that we talk about cash flow tactics, we have a lot of people hitting us up saying, I need a little bit more information before I know, like, I need to know if this applies to me, if I'm eligible for it. And, and, and so we, what we want to do, what we decided to do is create a webinar to where you can come in and get a little bit more information. You can kind of dip your toe in the water before you dive in and start working with us one-on-one. -on -one. We feel like a lot of people want that, that a little bit additional exposure. So every single week for the rest of 2017, at least, 
we're going to be doing one of these webinars. And we're going to do them in the evening so that most everybody can attend them. And we're going to go into depth in the strategies of applying what we've talked about to be able to collapse your time. Because our goal for investors is to take what takes 30 or 40 years and collapse those results into 10 years or less. And we've been able to do this regardless of your age, your income, or your prior experience. So this is the webinar that we want you to register for, register for here. So if you go to cashflowtactics.com forward slash ninja, N-I-N-J-A ninja forward slash ninja, you should register for the next upcoming webinar. Join us there to learn exactly how you can apply these and how to get started today. Thanks, guys. See you on the awesome. webinar.